Nico Osher here, presenting on behalf of myself and my co-authors, our presentation entitled Creation and Use of a Stock Images Database to Make Lectures More Diverse and Inclusive. Our objectives are to first briefly define stock images and explain their value for designing course materials as well as other enduring resources such as those used for research. Describe how to properly assess your right to digital images and properly attribute content to its creator. Describe an approach to creating and using a stock images database in my course, and I will share that database. And my goal for you is that at the end of this presentation, you are able to add diverse images to your own course materials while properly citing the creators to diversify your content and make it more relevant for your students. So some brief background on stock images. They're basically photography and other graphics, drawings, etc., supplied by professionals and by individuals that are licensed and made available online, often through databases for creative use and application in other presentations. Why use stock images? There's that old adage, a picture's worth a thousand words. We know that a lot of people learn visually and benefit from pictures supplementing their content. It helps to promote um, retaining of information and it's consistent with Universal Design for Learning's concept of multiple means of representation to reach the students as best as possible and ensure that learning happens for as many learners as possible. And we as educators are already pressed for time. We need to save time and we don't have extra time to becoming a photographer, spending all that time editing photos, uploading them, etc. Why reinvent the wheel when there are great stock images out there for you? So why use diverse images specifically? It fosters connection to course material for students and helps students feel represented by the content and the course. I am a white, masculine, presenting transgender person, and I have a very narrow perspective. I put my bitmojis in my lecture. I'm always white. They're always white. Adding diverse images can help students to feel welcome. And I teach in a school of nursing, so there's also a competence component that's important to consider. It helps students develop skills related to cultural competence and cultural humility, it helps to get people thinking about different groups and backgrounds that they do not belong to. And in the context of provision of healthcare, it helps to improve and maximize health outcomes by helping providers to accurately diagnose conditions and create culturally relevant care plans. As a concrete visual example, skin disorders look different in different races, skin types, but a lot of presentations that you'll see on skin disorders only feature the condition in white skin. So using the stock images resource to find images of psoriasis in Hispanic individuals, black individuals, and Asian individuals can supplement what the students are already receiving, seeing it in white individuals, and will allow them to move through their clinical careers with more competence and more confidence in leading to accurate diagnosis and facilitating proper care plans. Some barriers to using inclusive images is that faculty don't know where to find them. If you just Google psoriasis, you're going to find a bunch of pictures of white people and you're going to find a bunch of pictures that you don't have access to that come from textbooks and from individual contributors who don't want you to use them. And so there's just a real risk there. There are a lot of databases available that share stock images, and I basically made a master database of databases. It's shared here for you to use. You can follow this tiny URL, type it into your browser, or you can take out your smartphone and use the camera feature to scan this QR code, and it will take you to an Airtable. So that addresses barrier one, and the rest of this presentation will go through the stock images database in a little more detail and talk about some applications. The other barrier is that faculty don't understand the logistics of crediting creators and citing where their work came from. There are lots of different ways you can do this, and you'll see in this presentation I put down at the bottom this image of this person holding a camera is from the Canva template for the slides that I'm using. These skin disorder pictures came from Derm Atlas. This 
image came from Canva, and this is a Bitmoji. Here's some additional information about rights. We as academics know that attribution is important. It's a key component of academic integrity. And on a personal and societal level, it's important to uplift content creators. Creating stunning images is a lot of work. Photography, drawing, etc. It takes a lot of talent and time. And so we want to uplift those creators, especially black indigenous people of color. But really anybody who's taking the time to make these images available deserves to have their work cited. The key here is paying attention to the details. On this slide you'll see two images that come from Creative Commons and they both address different levels of use and attribution. So this one at the top says you can use it but you have to give appropriate credit and indicate if changes were made and linked to the license. So it tells you what it wants from you. You can use it for non-commercial purposes, no money generating. This one says, if you remix, transform, or build upon it, you cannot distribute it, no derivatives. So here's four different levels and you really wanna read through these and make sure you understand what you're doing. And I also recommend putting a link to the image on the slide so that if you go to your old presentations in order to build content for a new presentation, you can check and make sure that the attribution works for that new purpose. Maybe you designed some course materials for your class and now you're doing something that is commercial and you can easily check back and see that, oh, this is not commercial use, I need a different picture. So here is my database. Basically the columns represent the information I'm curating and the rows all represent a source of images or an individual database. So here's four databases, the Gender Spectrum Collection and Getty Open Content, Europeana and the Cell Image Library. To date, I've added 56 stock images databases to my master database with the link. And there are 17 different categories that can be sorted for like stock photos, diverse images, um, stock drawings, historical images, stock music, stock videos, research data, medical data, etc. I've also since added a column that talks about the different populations that are featured in the database. And the other thing that is included in this database is information about the license and attributions, as well as some notes. So we maintain this periodically when we find a new resource or when a database that we're trying to use is closed or revamped. I set up the original structure, all those columns, and the allowable formats, like this is a multiple select, this one has to be a URL, this is free text. And I included a bunch of rows that I was aware of and that I found using Google searches. And then I assigned it to a population of research volunteers in my lab who are included as co-authors and they help to populate the individual records, as well as identifying new sources to add to the list. We made sure to include images of diverse groups, including Hispanic people, the elderly, women of color, trans people, non-binary people, etc. And as I mentioned, we've added a column that represents the type of diversity featured in the database. In my course, I added some acknowledgement of racial diversity in various conditions. This shows albinism around the globe, as opposed to just showing what an albino person looks like who is white. I also have created a new course on cultural humility in healthcare and designing those slides has been easier using these databases. So my call for you is I hope you can take this presentation and think about it. Think about if your course materials are inclusive already, what you can do to make them more inclusive in terms of representation of images. And that is for course materials and any other public facing materials you use in your research or teaching or other roles. I encourage you to use diverse stock images to improve the relevance of your talks to your target audience and the benefit to learners if there is especially some sort of medical or um, career related action items. You can increase engagement by evoking connection and promoting understanding and reactions from your images. And I think that you will gain a lot of interest from your students. That is it for this talk. I hope you learned a lot. The QR code is here again, and you can email me with questions. Thank you.